So inside my private community, we have a monthly Q&A call. And last month, one of the questions that came in was asking about suggestions around efficiencies and managing everything. And of course, as entrepreneurs, we typically wear multiple hats. And so this member was really curious as to how I structure my days in order to manage it all. And the conversation that ensued was really interesting. And I found that I enjoy talking about some of the strategies that I've implemented to manage the day to day. So in today's episode, I'm going to share it with you. Let's get started. Hey, and welcome to the Creative Marketing Show. I'm your host, Angela S. Joyon. This is the podcast for ambitious women in business looking to cut the BS, stop dancing for likes, and learn to create honest and genuine marketing strategies that don't cause burnout and overwhelm. Have a question about content creation, social media, or maybe you're looking for more clarity on how to take your business to the next level. This is the show that brings the answers to your questions each and every week. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited that you're tuning in and I hope that you've been enjoying these episodes the last few weeks. I have certainly really enjoyed creating them for you. And what's amazing about this platform is we have the opportunity to share things that have worked with us. And one of the things that I found has been really working for me are some of the strategies I use every day in terms of managing all the components of my business. And one of the best parts is they're structured so that they don't cause burnout and overwhelm. I like strategy. I like ease. I like walks and lunch. And so what I want to share is just how my day to day looks like, because like you managing all of the things uh, can be overwhelming at times. So this is a way to break things up, to feel like we're maximizing our time and efficient. And so my hope is that you can adopt these in some way. Yours will look different than mine, but it's really so that you feel more aligned and on top of your day to day tasks and to implement some of the things you may have not been able to get to yet because you feel like, well, I have to finish this. I have to keep doing this. I don't have time to start that email list or get on Pinterest. So that's kind of the strategy. So we ease our days with our tasks that we're managing right now so that we can have the opportunity to bring more in. So how can we implement more efficiency into our workday? So to start, there's the master plan the weekly plan, and the daily plan. The master plan is all the tasks and duties that we have on the list. You know, that big, huge to-do list. Side note, I don't call it a to-do list anymore. When I, you know, I'm an old school pen and paper. I like using my notebook to have everything there. And I no longer call it a to-do list. I call it on the go because the to-do list makes it feel kind of daunting. So that was a little bit of a mindset shift for me. So I call it on the go. Here's what I've got on the go. So when we look at the master, the weekly and the daily plan, keep that in mind because we don't want to throw everything onto our plate all at once. Let's break down these plans. So the master plan is all the tasks and duties that we have on our list. That's everything. It's all of our day-to-day, it's our weekly, it's our monthly tasks, as well as the goals and the new things that we want to start implementing into our business. When we're too focused on all of the things, we're naturally going to feel overwhelmed. So the first suggestion that I would give is to create blocks and prioritize. For example, you could take everything from your master list and then segment them into categories such as your social media, your content creation, bookkeeping, email marketing, your inbox, your client work, your podcast, whatever that looks like. That's an example of some of mine. Yours may look like social media, email marketing, inventory, bookkeeping, even actually packing and fulfilling your orders or the time it takes to make your products. So again, yours is going to look a little bit different. What I encourage you to do is start pulling those items from the master list and segment them into blocks on your calendar for the month. So be intentional and thoughtful. For example, do you need to include bookkeeping and email marketing tasks on the calendar every week? Probably not. You could probably designate a week or maybe over two weeks of the month to batch out those tasks. So don't be having them on your calendar every week because that's where it's overwhelming if it doesn't need to be. 
ultimately where I want to head in this episode is to your weekly and your day-to-day blocks. This is where you start each week knowing what you have on the go and scheduling them out into specific time blocks. And that's where I find the efficiency comes in. So typically on a Friday after the end of my work week, I'll write out all of the segments that I'm going to tackle the following week. And from the master list, they're not all going to be on there. Those might come the following week, but this an includes any personal items I have because I want to be mindful of my life. So these time blocks will have everything work related, but also things like appointments and even my school drop off and pick up for my son, a walk with the dog and lunch. I like to make sure that I have lunch. That's fuel. That's our energy. And I feel like sometimes we get so wrapped up that we don't make those times for ourselves. So actually having them as part of your block, as part of your schedule can be really helpful. So for example, here is how a typical day might look like for me. The evening before, I would write out in my notebook, 7 a.m. And what do I do at 7? That's usually like breakfast. I like to practice uh, spelling and some reading with my son before school. Uh, You know, that's just kind of the day to day. I don't have to go into like too many specifics, but I do like to know like eat breakfast, anything I want to get accomplished with my son. Uh, 8 a.m. Sometimes I check emails. I like to get a little bit of a start on the day. So anything that came in the day before, and then I schedule those responses out for after 930. Um, If you want to know why I do that, send me a DM. There is a strategy behind that as well. 8.40, typically leaving for school drop off. 9 a.m. I'd like to walk the dog. Let's say I'm back by 9.45. I take a little bit of a break. That just gives me an opportunity to have a snack, a coffee, uh, tidy up, things like that. And 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., that is set hours for client work. Uh, Maybe it's 10 to noon. Typically, I don't like to schedule anything over an hour and a half to two hours in my blocks because that's where that creativity and that juice flowing starts to dwindle. So I like to keep it really fresh. Uh, And then from there, maybe 1130 to noon, I work on anything inside my uh, creative marketing membership, updating the Q&A thread or answering those questions inside the Facebook group, scheduling out some prompts, maybe from 12 to 115. uh, That's a day that I'm live inside the group, or maybe I have a meeting scheduled during that time. And then of course that 115, 145, there's my break, there's my lunch. Maybe I go for a walk around the block, take the dog with me. 2.30 to 3, back into emails, what's come through, giving myself a good half hour, 40 minutes. Then it's school pickup. When I get home, I like to allocate 30 minutes to help my son with his homework, work on some reading. And then typically that four to five, I don't personally love to shove a ton of stuff in that time block because it gives me a little bit of overflow. So anything that I missed earlier that day, and it gives me an opportunity to review and reprioritize what I need to take care of the next day. That's just my working hours. Again, the way you set yours up, maybe your working hours look different, but by segmenting and scheduling your day all the time. It's like how we schedule appointments. It's how we schedule our meetings. We should be scheduling the tasks within our business the same way we would with our clients or customers. By implementing this strategy every day, I have found I have been more efficient. I have been able to tackle more on. I feel less stressed because I know you know, the next day I can tackle X, Y, Z. So it's really about taking a moment and aligning your strategy with your priorities. And because a lot of the times I I hear it, I've been guilty of it before, where we're trying to do all of the things, but you know, this one piece might not be the priority. Always get through your priorities first, and then that will allow you to implement that time to tackle all of the new things. One last thing I will mention is being very specific. So when I allocate maybe an hour in terms of content creation on that actual list, I will detail exactly what pieces of content. So perhaps it's, I'm going to create a reel about this. I'm going to create a carousel post about this. I'm going to create three pins for Pinterest about this, this, and this. So it's not just, okay, work on your social media. Because once we do that, that's where things can get kind of lost or, oh, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about or work on. So having something at the end of your workday to be very clear on what you want to accomplish down to the details. So that next day when you're fresh, it's not, oh, I have to you know sit here and 
think of what I'm going to come up with creatively, where you'll have an action plan. Nope, I know I need to create this reel. I had an idea and we're going to do this. I'm going to create these carousel posts. Same thing with your email marketing. Okay, I'm going to map out my next two to three emails and I'm going to schedule them out. One's going to be about this. One's going to be about that. And this one's going to be about this. So being really specific will help you stay on track because how many times do we, you know, squirrel or our mind starts wandering and then we lose that focus. And then all of a sudden we're moving into the next time block and we haven't actually accomplished anything. In addition to this, here are a few tricks that also keep me on track and on schedule. I sound like Thomas the train. Oh my goodness. I just had a epiphany that I literally sound like Thomas and friends right now on set on track and on time. Okay. Uh, one thing I love to do is set a timer on my phone for that specific time block. So if I've set a 90 minute time block, I set the timer. There is something about pressure. I always like to think of, okay, if I were on the amazing race right now and I only had 90 minutes to do it, for a million dollars, hell yeah, I'm gonna work my ass off to get this done. So that's just really to keep me focused and accountable. The next thing is I try not to open up social media. Sometimes I actually will put that in as a block, um, if, especially if I'm posting or I know that I have anything scheduled out, but otherwise, I try not to touch social media because it's a rabbit hole. And then the more we see other things or we're influenced by it, that can take your mind to, you know, the bad place where you're comparing yourself or you're overwhelmed with information or, oh, maybe I should do it that way. Oh, maybe I should start this. It's the squirrel and the nut. So I find during my workday really being mindful of not opening up social media. In fact, typically I have my phone on do not disturb mode all day so that I'm, you know, not hearing those pings and those notifications. I'm not seeing anything pop up to distract me. So that's been really, really helpful as well. And of course, being realistic when it comes to scheduling out my day, I'm not a miracle worker. And so I'm not going to try and shove so much into one day. If I know in the reality, there's no way I'm going to get it done because then it's going to feel like a failure. There's going to it's going to feel more daunting and that you didn't get through anything. So being really specific of understanding the reality of what can you actually accomplish in an hour time block. If it's creating 15 posts and scheduling them out, tell me your secret because I don't know how you can do 15 in an hour. It does take some time. So being intentional and realistic is helpful. And then otherwise, you know, during slower seasons of my business or days when things are a little bit quieter, uh, maybe there's less meetings with clients. Uh, even around the holidays, I took, you know, a little bit of extra time to really work on some new opportunities and, and have my days, maybe they were half days because I'm also spending time with family. Um, so when it's those quiet times of seizing those opportunities and batching and blocking off some time where you can get those, you know, those big audacious goals off of your list as well. So lastly, I often think about the time when I worked an 8.30 to 5 job, I was a marketing manager, and you know, we'd have the hour lunch. And aside from that hour, there were seven and a half hours in each day that I had allocated to do my job. And you might resonate with this. I find this actually really funny. Think about when, if you ever worked before you were an entrepreneur, before you were a business owner, if you ever worked in that capacity, nine to five, whatever it was, I'll tell you from my personal experience, the morning kind of walk in, oh, good morning, catching up with some coworkers or colleagues, maybe getting that extra cup of coffee, uh, dare I say, taking a smoke break. This was like over 10 years ago. Yes, that's what I did. Um, so if there was multiple of those, you know, and, and those pop-ins and catching up, I'll tell you, I could, I did my job very efficiently and I enjoyed it, but there was a lot of time in that day that was absolutely not work related, wasted. It was social. And as entrepreneurs now, when now we're, we're the business owner, we often get caught in the mindset of we have to work way harder than we ever did. And it's so interesting because we have that accountability to ourselves and it's noble, it's amazing. And at many times it's absolutely necessary for us to work harder than we ever have before. But that is where sometimes accountability and discipline can take a step back. So being accountable to your time and blocking it and not 
putting that pressure on that you have 12 hours in the day and you need to fill all 12 hours because I also want you to have a life. So start with your own schedule, do what works well for you. If your day is longer, your work hours are longer, allocate as needed. It's got to work for your lifestyle as well. But as you get used to this process, you might be able to become more efficient and that's going to give you back more of that time, whether that's more personal time for yourself or that's that time to start implementing those things that are on the big glorious to-do list that you might have that you've been meaning to get to. So act as your own boss, lay out the framework, keep yourself accountable, but also be realistic and then enjoy all the time that you can in this process because as business owners we owe it to ourselves to enjoy what we're doing to take care of our personal needs and to manage our personal and mental health i hope that that was helpful for you i will say it has been such a game changer for me i do it every single day and leading up to if whenever I want to take some time off. Uh, that's also really helped me kind of project of what's going on and how I can then take those breaks. I truly hope you found this helpful and I hope that you're enjoying the podcast. If you could take a minute right now and leave your rating and review over on Apple Podcasts for the Creative Marketing Show, I would be so grateful. It allows me the opportunity to reach more business owners like you and it just makes me feel really good when I can hear what you're thinking of the show. And of course, if you have a suggestion or a question that you'd like to hear on an upcoming episode, you can head over to Creative Marketing Show com. There is a forum there and you can submit it and I just may read it on an upcoming episode because of course I want to tap into what you'd like to hear. And if you're looking for more intensive support, check out in the show notes, the creative marketing membership, my private monthly subscription that provides a roadmap for all of your marketing and social needs, templates that you can utilize so you're not wasting time trying to come up with new concepts. And of course, a weekly Q&A thread and our monthly Q&A call where so much clarity comes for all the members. So I hope to see you inside. You can join at any time. I'll drop all those details in the show notes. Otherwise, I will be back next Wednesday with another episode. Have a great week.